Hey everybody, this is Juan Martinez of the Easyville Network and we are here at E3. I am going to be walking to the show floor now. Uh, this is further than I usually park at because I guess it's open to the public now. Uh, good times. So enjoy this uh, tour of E3 everybody. So unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond my control, I won't be going to the third day of E3. So here is my Instagram story recap of the show. I made a video where I said I would be wearing three days of uh, Adidas sneakers, boo sneakers. I won't be able to do that, unfortunately. But there was my first day where I called it hashtag E3 stripes. Uh, here is me going up to the show floor. It's a little bit different than in previous years because this time it's going to be open to the public. And that was a bit of a issue, I would say, just because, you know, the thing is with E3, it's a show that's designed for people who are in the industry, whether they are retailers, uh, buyers, developers looking to make connections. And of course, you know, someone like me who was in the media was actually covering these games and talking about them in a professional capacity as much as professional as somebody like me gets um so here's actually the uh, nintendo booth and you can see the effect of the uh, the public being there it's it is packed it's always packed at the nintendo booth anyways but this year is especially way more packed and, and nintendo tried their best to really get ready for that and they have it's say like 50 60 percent of the booth is dedicated to uh kiosks with uh, super mario odyssey but the lines were still unbelievably long. Um, it took me about an hour and a half just to play the game. And that was just because I was playing on the actual Switch itself. Um, if you actually wanted to play on the TV, it would have taken maybe two, three hours. Um, wasn't all lost. Uh, there was these amiibos. And you can see I took a special notice to the, the Legend of Zelda champions. Especially the Rook, which is basically just an analog for the Rock. Uh, the Super Mario Odyssey Amiibos are fantastic with the uh, pimp suit Bowser. <laughs> I can't believe they made a white suit of Bowser. Uh, the Nintendo set was designed after the uh, New Donk City level that is going to be in the game. Uh, it's kind of like a old timey New York. Uh, for me, I thought it was basically designed by people who think New York looks like the New York, New York casino in Las Vegas. And here is me waiting desperately to finally get a chance to play Super Mario Odyssey, which I enjoyed. Uh, this is the prize that we got for playing Mario Odyssey, which is the uh, the hat, uh, the magic hat that you get and you, that you, Mario uses to throw around and possess people, which they're calling, I guess, capture. <laughs> they're calling it capture. Uh, that's crazy. And then here we are at the Sony booth. Obviously, Spider-Man was a uh, big deal to me because Spider-Man is my favorite comic book character. PlayStation booth, as expected, was very crowded. Uh, not as much as the Nintendo one because they had their uh, PlayStation app where people could actually book times to actually go to play. Uh, here's the Gran Turismo set where they had people play uh, VR version and also a uh, simulator version, which is always a staple of E3. Uh, the fancy setups where you can play racing games like you were actually in the car itself with the... Uh, vibrations and all that good stuff so and then here's the uh, vr setup uh and then just hear me walking around the various kind of off broadway parts of e3 uh there's farming simulator uh here's yakuza 6 which is part of the uh, atlas sega booth even though atlas didn't really have anything at the show it was mostly just for yakuza 6 and uh sonic mania and sonic forces which sonic mania looks pretty good uh, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with it, and, you know, it's just, it looks like a Sonic game, but it's, they're basically handing it over to people who know what to do with Sonic. Uh, here is a part of the PlayStation booth that I didn't really understand, other than that I could just see people playing with their phones instead of regular controllers, which is a unique feature. I guess it's just to be for party games. Um, here's some more off-Broadway stuff. Uh, ple people playing uh, VR simulators in front of a green screen, even though this does nothing for the person actually playing the game. <laughs> I remember seeing this and just, oh my gosh, <clears throat> just thinking it was pretty funny. More VR stuff. I, Yeah. 
VR is a uh, it's a thing, and I'm glad it's uh, gonna be something that's gonna just evolve and get better in the future. But for right now, we're still in that. Uh, that's funny. Uh, there's a lot more cosplay at E3 this year, as you can see from that. And here is me walking to uh, the E3 Coliseum, which is uh, Comic-Con style panels where people can ask questions uh, to developers uh, and while they present and show off maybe footage or give a little bit more insight to their games. It was at the Novo uh, in LA Live. And I actually haven't been there in a while, which is crazy. Uh, this is fun because you can't actually do what I just did. I didn't know that till after the fact. I uh, can't take pictures. Uh, you can't take videos, actually. You can take still pictures, but you can't take video. Um, this is me, basically me waiting for Spider-Man to come up. Uh, and then here we go, which is fun because I got to see uh, Brian Intahar, old of, of uh, EGM and 1UP fame. And it was cool to see him become the creative director of Spider-Man. Fortunately, the show kind of had a couple of issues. One of the spotlights broke and it caught on fire. So we had to have a, I believe, half hour delay before the show actually got finished up. And then when I left, there was actually going to be a Jack Black, uh, Tim Schafer panel, which caused a lot of people to get in line. And of course, it was after the show. So people were just heading off there post the uh, thing closing. Um, one of the things that uh, made it a big deal of E3, again, this year was the swag. Not as much as it was in previous years, but there was still plenty of swag, including these bags. And these guys had just had a little bit too extra with the bags. Uh, here's me day two. I uh, wore the uh, EQT 9317. I think I messed up the rotation by bringing that one. And then here's me heading to my favorite part of E3, which is avoiding the crowds. Uh, walking from the uh, West Hall to the South Hall, you go upstairs. Uh, normally, this is uh, closed off just to um, basically media people, uh, but this year there were no guards, so anybody could just walk around uh, the top floors. And also, this is where you get to see guys like Miyamoto and business people just walk around, and you're like, oh, Shadow E3. Uh, here we are in the South Hall. We've got Xbox, Activision, Bethesda, Warner Brothers, uh, Konami, no, not Konami, uh, Capcom, a bunch of other like third party uh, big name devs out there. Twitch was also a huge presence. Uh, not surprisingly, Twitch has just been uh, blowing up with their streaming service. Um, see more off Broadway E3 stuff with the uh, Chinese RPGs, MMOs, <laughs> just being there, which, you know, hey, they have their fans. It's good for them, and it's good for them that they get to have a big presence at E3. Um, but, you know, here's where you're going to see, like, things just get... <sighs> There's just so many people than there are compared to, like, previous E3s, and it's not like they accounted for that. So especially this is going to be really relevant if you're at the Xbox booth because it is just a packed house there. It is wild. I tried to play Crackdown 3 and I didn't get the chance because there were just so many people. Oh, segue here. Uh, these are the Super Soul Brothers and they play jazzy renditions of uh, classic video game themes. They're playing the Lost Woods theme right now, which is awesome. It was really good. I <laughs> thought it was great. Um, I think uh, this is the Ubisoft uh, booth. Uh, they had South Park, Far Cry 5, uh, Super Mario. Oh, no. Uh, I'm sorry. Mario and Rabbids, which I got to play for a little bit, which is fun. Uh, the Bandai Namco booth, Nino Kuni 2. Got to play the uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z game. Uh, there's Bethesda. Quick look right there uh, with their uh, Wolfenstein. Two demo, so you'll see here. Uh, Fighter Z is it's fun, it just looks like a Dragon Ball cartoon, which is as close as it's been so far. Um, here's some more look at the uh, Ubi booth, and then there's a uh, Project Cars 2. Which, no surprise, there is a car uh, right in front for people to take fancy pictures with. Uh, here's the uh. <laughs> The Harvest Moon booth, which is a yearly tradition. Fortunately, there's no big cow this year, but they did have a, a swag shop where you could buy various uh, characters from the Harvest Moon franchise, which I never realized there were so many. Look at all those games. That is nuts. Uh, here's a Capcom booth, and we are passing through the history of Street Fighter in reverse. <laughs> so there's five, four, three, Alpha, two, and the original. My God, it's been 30 years. I, yeah, no, that's crazy. And then here we have people playing Street Fighter V, even though that game's out. That's 
why would you go there if the game's already out? And then here's uh, Marvel Capcom Infinite. Uh, there's a demo already out on the PlayStation Network. So again, I get it. You know, it's cool to play in a setting like this, but why waste your time playing something that you could play at home? So here's the Square Enix booth. Only just passed through it because there wasn't really any games this year that I was particularly hyped for from Square Enix, especially since Hitman's gone uh, and there's no Kingdom Hearts presence. Uh, it's really, oh, Life is Strange is coming back, but I, no, I never played the first one. I should probably get around to playing that. Uh, here's the uh, Mega Man Legacy Collection 2 uh, with a uh, Mega Man you could pose with. Here's some more E3 swag. I totally would have bought all of those rabbits if they were available. Uh, they're just for pre-order. And then here's me watching a uh, a demo that is not part of the actual uh, E3 demo that people can play at for uh, Rabbids and Mario. Uh, that game is promising. Uh, it's not what I expected, uh, which is, I guess, a good surprise. Um, it's It plays like they like to say it's XCOM. So there's a bit of a strategy involved where you're trying to avoid getting hit by enemies and then you're strategically placing yourself so you can you know hit them as well okay well hopefully everybody enjoyed this uh quick look at e3 uh like i said i might not be able to make it to day three so this is gonna have to do for now uh here's my recap through my instagram story which you can find on easyville uh everything is easyville pretty much me on the internet so uh thanks for watching everybody you can learn more about the easyville network by going to patreon.com slash easyville subscribe to that it's the way we keep the channel going and yeah this is juan martinez of the easyville network and i suffered through e3 2017 let's just have a public day please e3 give them a public day next year thanks for watching everybody